Ramen, a Japanese staple that's now popular worldwide. Each region has its own vision, shifting with the times while staying true to the original. Welcome to Japan, the land of ramen. This is part two of our tour of Hokkaido. As our journey continues, we sample ramen from Hakodate and Asahikawa. Our first stop, the southern port city of Hakodate, home to around 240,000 people. It's Hokkaido's third largest city. At 6 a.m., the morning market is in full swing. In search of the freshest ingredients, visitors come here from all over the world. Of course, there's also ramen. And in Hakodate, that means salt or shio style. We'll learn about the best bowls in town from an expert. Matsuda Masahiro, born and raised in Hakodate, and a local taxi driver for 27 years. Matsuda's taxi is a bit unusual. It has a bowl of ramen as a roof light, and it even has a name. The one and only Hakodate Shio Ramen Taxi. The drivers know all the best local spots to introduce to their passengers, and Matsuda is one of them. As soon as it opens, hungry fans are already lining up. Opened in 1947, it's one of the few local shops to preserve the spirit of the original Hakodate ramen. It's operated by the Ouras. For Hakodate ramen, it's all about the clear soup. His wife, Yumiko, is in charge of the soup. The key to its classic flavor. Just three teaspoons of salt. They also make the noodles. Since opening at 11.30, there's been a constant stream of customers. But why is Hakodate ramen Shio style? 
In the 19th century, the shogunate had closed off Japan to the outside world. But in 1859, trading ports were established in Nagasaki, Yokohama, and here in Hakodate. Various nations opened consulates in Hakodate, and it rapidly developed an international character. It soon became Hokkaido's most populous city. This is a Hakodate newspaper from 1884. There's a mention of Nankin noodles, in other words, ramen. In fact, this is the oldest known advertisement for ramen in Japan. The exact recipe isn't known, but it's believed to have been a salt-flavored noodle dish. The dish was brought to Hakodate by Chinese merchants who crossed the sea in search of the abundant local marine products. They helped spread ramen culture throughout the area. A trend continued by the Aura's shop and passed down to the present day. ま、昔はシャイヨシヤキって感謝のシャで。各教の方がもうこの地区にいて、それでまあうちの親父もそうなんですけども、台湾とかそういう人たちが最初に作ったのがシオラーメン。私小さい頃からの名残があって、未だに
after simmering for six straight hours. The pork fat lid for the soup is finally done. Add the painstakingly rendered pork fat to the double soup and you get Asahikawa ramen. In 1947, one of the people who helped bring Asahikawa ramen to the world was Kato Enao. But the work he did before had nothing to do with ramen. Using the stories he'd heard and his imagination, a whole year of trial and error followed. With that, the soup stock was complete. At the time, he offered two different flavors. The reason shoyu was so popular in Asahikawa was this sake brewery founded in 1890. During World War II, the brewing of sake was restricted, so they had no choice but to switch to making soy sauce. After the war, their soy sauce was used all over Asahikawa. Their soy sauce is a mainstay of Asahikawa ramen to this day. June 2023, the day of Asahikawa City University School Festival. A ramen stall operated by students, part of the festival for 19 years. This is the seminar group that will run the ramen stall. Professor Eguchi is the group's advisor, and the subject he actually teaches is business administration. The student-made ramen begins with training at a long-established shop. Everything from the soup to the chashu pork and pickled bamboo shoots are made by the students. A bowl of their ramen brings smiles to the faces of family, friends and everyone who has one. with its long history as a port town. Asahikawa, in the bitter cold of central Hokkaido. Unique ramen made in each city, an inheritance to be treasured through generations. Wouldn't you like some yourself? Come pay a visit for the best bowl of ramen you've ever had.